Um, so I'm a producer at CBS News, and I'm basically in charge of disasters. Uh, I'm in charge of visualization of them. This technology I wanted to show you is uh, a web-based way of looking at the Earth. It's called Earth Viewer, and uh, you'll see where we are now here in Monterey, looking, zooming in on it. Um, what's incredible about it is that I can enter any address and fly around and take you to the hills here. Satellite imagery mixed with aerial imagery. But also fascinating, as we can see the location of TED here, and I can see the greatest design conference that ever was or likely will ever be, and I can go to a website, you see. But I can also turn on things that I couldn't even imagine only a year ago. The Chinese restaurants, I found the pharmacy uh, by using this thing. The Italian restaurants, where they are in relation to, to uh, the hotels and stuff. Can you turn on the Chinese embassies? Uh, well, uh, NEMA unfortunately doesn't have that map properly, but I'm sure uh, that's the National Imaging and Mapping Agency. Good, good joke there. Um, and, and what I'm trying to show you here is that I can go to different places. Uh, why don't I take you someplace else? Um, we'll take you someplace else. I just popped in an address here that was given to me by Raven. And uh, I don't know if you've been to someplace else. Oh, uh, wait. Wait, there we go. Someplace else is right here. That's my house. That's correct. And, uh, yeah. Just put a little icon there. Um, and what's fun is, you know, not only can I go home, I just want to show you how it's changing things. I'm taking you through many, many different layers of imagery, all mixed on. This is where I live, right next to the Museum of Natural History over here. And I'm going to take you down, down the street here. All of these different layers are layered upon layered, and there's elevation data. That gave me the three-dimensionality. Here is the uh, image of the World Trade Center site. And um, now I'm going to take you out of there and take you to someplace far away. And, uh, You've all heard about Tora Bora endlessly, but what does it look like? I mean, no one's really made it sensible to us, so we're trying to figure out a way of doing that. So this is what Tora Bora looks like, and it, sorry about that, it's, it's got a page in there a little bit sometimes. You know, these IBM machines, I can't really. Um, but I'm going to take you down and give you a sense of what that Kyber Pass area looks like, and travel along the way there, and then move to Kabul, which, see, I don't remember where Kabul is. I'm doing this just to give you an example. So I'll just type in Kabul, Afghanistan, and I will be taken to it. I don't think they have a good listing of Chinese restaurants in Kabul, I'm sorry. But um, what does this mean for us and the future and news and all that stuff? Well, I think it's incredibly profound uh, in terms of how things are going to change. I'm sorry to give you the little sickness there. Um, but what I'm trying to do is figure out ways of changing the way we, you see that over there? You can see the, uh, where, where my hand is. That is the actual field where the executions we're in the middle of the soccer games at halftime, and the embassies are over, over here and stuff. And, um, and now I'm going to take you to some place that's, I, I think, really extraordinary. It's a place called Darunta. And I've put high-resolution satellite imagery. This is imagery captured from 400 miles in space from a new, uh, fairly new uh, satellite called Iconos. And I wanted to show you something. This was taken slightly before the uh, September 11th. Um, bombing, and what I'm showing you here is a uh, terrorist training camp uh, run by uh, both Al-Qaeda and uh, the Taliban. You see that's a landing plat platform there for helicopter. These are tunnel entrances. This area right up top here is a guard tower over the 
the uh, area where there are tunnels. This is actually people on the ground in a line and a jeep in front of it. So from 400 miles in space, we can see what had been a denied area, the most difficult thing to get imagery of. Um, you can see the positions along the way, and the, these are uh, gun emplacements and such things. Um, but let me take you to something a little more joyous. Uh, well, Area 51 is joyous to me. Um, but I'm, I'm going to take you to Mount St. Helens uh, just to give you a sense of this. Where does it go from here? Where, where, where are we going to take this? Um, I, I think what you're going to see in the near future is much higher resolution imagery. Um, uh, and we're going to integrate real-time weather in three-dimensionality. So before a hurricane actually hits the land, you're going to see in three-dimensionality what that storm actually looks like as it comes into the, the coastline. And we'll be able to give you real data, not just the imagination of an artist, but as truthful a representation of it as possible. And uh, I guess uh, I'll just take us back to Ted here. And uh, the tail numbers in Narita. The, the tail numbers in Narita. The tail well, um, I, I, I have uh, other software which, uh, which I can show you all the planes in midair uh, in America right now. Um, but uh, shall I show you that? Yeah. You want to see that? Let's, let's, let's just have a little fun here. Have to, let's hope it will connect. I should, yeah, it's pre-release, it says. What I'm just showing you now, just real quickly, if it works, God willing, um, it does. These are all the planes in the United States that we're looking at right now. Come on, zoom in there. Give me, give me something. And so this plane here, well, let me just show you something about that plane. This is, this plane, what, what do we know about it? Okay. This is the aircraft ID, the lat long. It's taken off from Chicago to Midway. It's going to Wurtsmith, wherever that might be. And this is the route it's been taken, not much of a route. But the reason I'm showing you all these things is that we're coming to a time where we can overlay many, many different types of data. Not only the stuff here, the, all the restaurants, but there's even crime statistics built into this. I could see the crime statistics of a neighborhood on the fly. And the weather and the any kind of real-time data will be integrated into, um, well, that's a little weird. I don't know what, I, I think I've overloaded the thing. But, um, but I'll be able to, yeah, let's see, the San Benito County, I guess that's not here, but that's the latest crime statistics I have online here. So, you know, I can, soon on a handheld device, I'll know when I'm in a bad neighborhood or not. Anyway, I'm just giving you a rich uh, sense of some of these things. I hope I didn't talk too much, but it's hard to contain my enthusiasm. <laughs> okay. I know we can look at this all day. I'd be happy to show anybody later. You can show them the video.